welcome back to the Cock Dice. I thought it was time I got myself a boss for my orcs, well, a war boss of some sort. Now, whilst I am doing an Evil Sons army, and at some point I'm probably going to want some sort of biker boss or the, the Death Killer War Trike, I thought I'd start with a foot boss for my sort of thousand point initial force. I've decided to go with the good old Auric Mega Boss from Age of Sigma. He's a really nice, chunky model. Um, great pose and he's pretty simple to convert and I've not really planned much further than that I've got a whole bunch of bits so he's gonna have a power claw he wants the killer claw uh, artifact it's still pretty good with the new codex so I'm gonna steal this one here from the Black Reach boss kit um, it's pretty chunky it's gonna look quite small on him but I, I don't really want a massive massive power claw I, I considered building my own went against it I've got a whole bunch of different shoulder pads um, from various orc kits. So there's some from Killer Cans, there's some from Orc Boys, Knobs, all sorts in there. Um, I'm going to replace his shoulders and possibly some of his kneecaps and other armoured bits. So I wanted something that was a bit rounder and kind of brought that 40k vibe to him a little bit. What else we got here? Uh, replacement jaw for him. This is from a uh, Warbite kit. So I'll replace the kind of Age of Sigmari carved chunky metal jaw with that. Uh, I've got a load of powery cables and gubbins, uh, they'll go on his back to power his fist. Uh, we've got some guns, um, I'm going to cobble together some sort of custom shooter. I've got some other pieces in here, things like some cloth for some death guard, just in case I want to replace any of the kind of cloth bits. I'm not sure they're going to feature in this. So we're going to start tonight's conversion with the mega boss body. Um, I've Cut it all out the sprue and done a bit of prep work for it. There's a whole bunch of extra bits we need to do on this first. Move it. Hobby knife first of all. So you want a pair of clippers, you want a hobby knife, and we're going to just start hacking away at this a little bit. So starting with areas like this where we've got some chain mail, we'll just get the knife in, remove this nice and quickly. So I'll go around the whole body and get all the chain mail off now. So here's tonight's health and safety tip. Be really, really careful when you're using a very sharp knife because I've just stabbed myself in the finger. I was doing this little bit down here and trying to cut back and then cut down and I managed to go straight through this. So we'll do a bit of cleanup on this later on. Um, but as you can see, I've made a bit of a hash of that. So I'll need some green stuff of some sort. Anyhow, I've removed all the chain mail. Next bit is going to be clippers. So I'm fingers are safe for the minute. We'll get rid of this skull. Um, whilst it's really cool, uh, I don't need it for 40k. I'm, if you're doing snake bites, you might want to leave it. If you want to do this as a beast boss, you might want to leave it. I've got an evil sons. I'm not going to keep the skull. I'm, if I was being really careful, I might try and carve off underneath it. But to be honest, I think I'm, tonight I'm just going to clip it off. No doubt I'll do another boss in the future. Because um, converting thing stuff's my thing. But just get the clippers and just take it off. Nice and quickly like that. Next job, while we're on the head, is going to remove this bit. So I want to add something a bit more 40k-ish uh, through the use of the front of a war bike. So I'll just clip this down right the way back to the main arm of it. So that's how that's going to come out. So we're getting there quite quickly here now. Now we can see here one of the issues I've got. These bits, whilst really cool and spiky, stick out. Now I've seen some other people put technology underneath here. I want to kind of level this off so I can build vertically on his back. So we're going to take a look at how this goes together, get a pair of clippers and we're just going to take these ends off. So I'm going to take this pack, this uh, chunk of metal off here, just slice it off nice and quickly, taking care not to cut your fingers off. And one of the other thing I'm going to do on these is these armor plates are not smooth. You can see they've got a weird dimples and stuff in it. Now, whilst they make it a bit more interesting with painting, I think it's a bit too rough and ready for 40k, so I'm going to just smooth these off as much as I can. Try and make some of the plates a little rounder. So I've rounded all the plates off a little bit. Um, as you can see, a bit smooth. Oh, let's try and get it focused. As you can see, they're a bit smoother. I've taken all the edges off. They should paint up a bit more and look a bit more like the rest of my army. I've not done it on all of them. Some like the thigh plates are a bit hard to do. Uh, I've also rounded out toe a little bit on this foot. Um, I think the rounded boot just looks a bit more 40k-esque than the kind of pointy shoe. 
So last couple of things to do now. I'm going to take a pair of clippers and I'm actually going to remove this kneecap. We'll replace it with something a bit more 40k -y in a minute. The only other thing I'm going to do is on his other foot, I'm going to take off the front of his toes. Um, I kind of like the idea of odd boots on this guy. Um, salvage some somewhere. So we're going to take this off right across there. So that is the majority of the prep work we're going to do on him. Now, I'm going to mount this guy on a 50mm base rather than a 65mm. Uh, an old boss at the moment comes on a 40mm, so I think that's a fair kind of size to go. I think the 65mm base is just a little too big for this model. I think even in, in Age of Sigmar it looks a little towards. So I'll get his body stuck together, we'll pop him on a base and then we'll start jazzing him up a little bit. So while his main body's drying off, we're going to do a little bit of work uh, to remove this from off. And then we're just going to take a cut straight to here. I'm actually going to do it with a pair of clippers first. If you've got a saw, you could use one of those instead, or you can just use a really big knife. You can start to see how big it's going to be. It wants to be back about there. So we need to take a chunk of this arm off as well. So I'll do that now while I'm waiting. Just a pair of clippers straight through it. Take a chunk off. Test fitted again. I think we're getting pretty close there, so I'll do the rest by knife in a while. So for his gun arm, instead of carrying the gun, I'm pretty sure Warboss want to keep his hands free for all sorts of other reasons. Crushing the skulls of their enemies and cuffing their little grot around the head. Um, I thought I'd give him a, uh, a gun mounted on his forearm guard here. So I'm going to build a gun and build a bit of a uh, mechanism for it to sort of be powered. We'll do it out of these spare bits here. So I've um, got a spare big shooter. Spare normal shooter. I thought the changing barrel size might be quite cool. We've got a nice big fat drum barrel, um, uh, drum clip for his ammo. And then this piece, which is from a looter kit, I think that can be the base of it. So we need to remove this arm first of all. And then just clean up that area a little bit. And for the guns, I'm just going to use a big knife to just ease through this one here. Of that bit and this one we'll take it right back here just after the trigger guard we'll do a quick test fit of this now because it's multiple parts and i can't hold them all at once we're going to use a bit of blue tack that's where it's starting to go i'll sneak a hand in under there so i've got a spare blood bowl hand here i'd like that to be a bit more visible so i might put the ammo clip on the back To an extent that will help hide this bit here. We've got a good move there. Leave his hand visible. Yeah, I think that's starting to look the business. So we're going to start armouring him up with some more 40k style armour. So I've forged ahead again with this guy a little bit. Um, I've been um and ah about what to do with him. So first thing I did was drop a bit of green stuff behind his neck and push his head upwards a little bit. I was hoping that would give me enough space to drop this underneath. But it, unfortunately, because of this guy's got quite a long jaw, it sits too low. And because I've cut the back of the these bits off, I can't now mount it as a sort of iron gob and put it higher up here, which would be my sort of second choice. I also can't find the other one of these I have, which is the uh, the one with the central spike on it. Um, I've chucked it in a box somewhere. And I can't see it now, which is really frustrating. So while I was kind of pondering what to do next, I've green stuffed up, filled the gaps around the gun. You can see here, it's not particularly great. I'll stick some glyph plates on here as well, just to hide it a little bit. Um, but the guns are all nicely sealed. I've filled in the drum at the back there, I've tied it around his neck, and I've filled a bit of the, a few of the holes on this shoulder pad. So I'm going to kind of forge ahead, and I'll, I might come back and do something about the neckline later. Uh, I'm just a bit undecided. Really start thundering on with him now. Um, I'm going to stick some shoulder pads on him, so we want some nice big chunky shoulder pads to go on this guy. Um, I want to leave the kind of under shoulder pad, in fact I might clean that one round a little bit. This one I've rounded off, I think I'll do the same on this one, so just kind of take your knife and just trim round. Take this upper curve off, we don't need it, you're not going to see it. So I'll add a couple of nice big chunky 40k shoulder pads onto him. You can see here you just need to try to trim round and shape so that these fit on neatly. So these are just the shoulders from the killer cans. 
um, and they're pretty nice fat chunky shoulder pads and I think they look pretty awesome on it. I'm going to get his power claw on as well. This is just going to be a matter of fitting that in and then we'll do a bit of green stuff work just to tidy it up. I think he's starting to look the part of a war boss. Now I also wanted to sort his knee out so I'm going to grab a shoulder pad from a knob, hockey knob and we'll just literally glue that upside down on his knee there. So we're going to head around the back of him now. We've now where we cut off the uh, back of the plate, back of the armor plate that goes over his back. Um, we've got this big open space we're going to do some work with, and we want to give this power fist some power. So I've grabbed a chunk of pieces. What else have we got? Some there, some there, up there, a bit of a rocket. Can always raid the bits box for anything else if I need to. Uh, one of the first things I want to do is make sure Power Fist has got some power and juice going to it. This looks like a pretty good fit. So we're going to drop that round there. So I need to trim off that pipe and trim off that pipe. Let's check where it fits. This fits right over to there quite nicely. If I flatten off oh, without pulling this off, that'll be fun. Let's flatten off this area here a little bit. Just fit that in there and give it a little bit of time to dry uh, before you flip the model over. So I'm going to leave the model leaning that way. Nice and high. Then we'll clean up the ends in a little bit. And now we'll just start adding up some gubbins. So I think just on this side, just straight onto his back, because we're going to hide most of this. We've got this cool piece, I think this is from a Goliath ganger. It seems to be some sort of cool generator. Uh, exhaust pipe under there as well, so we'll just trim this down. I think this is from an Admet kit, I think. Some days I've no idea where I get my parts from. I just have a uh, box and box of bits. So we'll drop that in here. And as we go up onto his back, one thing we do need to do, we need to boss pole. Right, let's get a boss pole. Got some brass wire on a nice big fat drill bit. And I'm simply going to put a hole round about there. Quite high up on his back, leaving plenty of space to do some more doodats. I'm just going to drill a hole straight into his back. So the hole drilled in his back, we're just going to drop a length of, I think this is a millimetre and a half brass wire in there. So I'll drop some glue on the back of it, drop the brass wire in. And then essentially we're going to mount this on the back of it. So I don't want it to, you can have it as high as you want. You can add all sorts of gubbins. You want to have a big boss pole. I want to keep this quite low. Uh, don't want to make too big a target of him. I want to make sure it sits above his shoulder pad. So we want to cut around about here-ish. Because um, this is brass wire, I don't want to ruin my best clippers, so I've got a pair of cheap, uh, who are these from? I don't know, Draper clippers. These are really nice and sturdy. Great for brass wire. So on the back of this, we need to find a little position somewhere to put a hole in it. With my drill, which I've got out of the way. It's to sit about there. It's going to be a bit tight, this. I think it's supposed to have a pole on it overall. And then we'll just drop it on top. And that, there we go, pretty much exactly where I wanted it. Take the central piece here, I don't really need the rockets. Um, it's got a nice curve to it. it, looks like it'll follow his back a little bit quite well. So I'll just trim these side bits off. This is from a Nork Storm Boy kit. On the spare rocket pack bits. Just clean it up, make sure it's nice and flush. Otherwise, you can see this one's sticking out a little bit. So, we just need to trim it so it sits nice and level all the way down. We're just filling up this space here, making sure it looks as cool as possible. What else do we need to do? I was going to do something with this um, going part here. Again, make it look a bit more 40k. I found this in another kit. Who was this from? I don't know. I think it's from uh, one of the Blood Bowl Orcs, I think. I'm going to overlay that onto here. I have still got his neck. Oh, has that been snapped? No, it's not been snapped. It's that way, doesn't it? His um, necklace. I think we'll actually add this back in again now. It'll help hide some of that mess that we made earlier when I cut his neck off. Do we're doing something just to cover over this arm here, so I'll have a look for some shoulder pads. I want a glyph plate I mentioned earlier. 
So glyph plate wants to go on top here. I'm going to pop some super glue on it instead because of the green stuff over there. So this looks like about the right size. In fact, it's nearly perfect. Drop that on top of there. Perfect. So I'll drop a plate over this. This just hides the rest of the monkey arm here and some of this connection. It's always great just to be able to drop pieces in like this. covers up that and the connector between the elbow otherwise I'll have to do some manky green stuff work. So after poking around in my bits box for a little while and having a look at the model itself I think I'm going to call this guy done. Um, there's nothing else I, I can really think I'm going to add to him. I, I spend ages just adding little bits but I think for now we'll call him quits. I'm going to go around and green stuff up some of these little gaps. One there, there's one back here. I'll finish him up, go and get him painted. You hang around a second and you can see a painted version of coming up right about now. Thanks for watching. And thanks for joining us here at The Clock Dice. Why not like this video and add a comment below? It really helps boost the channel. And while you're at it, if you click on the icon below, you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live. Why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care and we'll see you next time.